Hello folks, welcome back. I'm following on from my last tutorial about using multi-tracks for your audio production when making film. I want to talk more about global effects. We've learned in previous tutorials that you can take your audio effects They're over here somewhere and you can grab whatever you want like uh, reverbs and you just literally drag, you drop it onto the piece of audio and I showed you how to manipulate them different things like EQ um, dynamics like gates compressors that sort of thing for that particular what we call region or that block of audio trouble is it only works for that block of audio and it was pretty poor especially for things like reverb because reverb needs that bit where the tail lingers on whereas if you if you drop a reverb onto a region of audio when you get to the end of that particular region let's say this one here let's zoom in a bit so you reverb on this piece of audio here or sound lovely 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 so you get till it gets to the end here and then it'll just stop dead the audio is finished the reverb doesn't ring on um, so it's not really doing the job this is where global effects come in global effects I use via the audio track mixer. There's probably other ways to do it um, that I haven't sussed out yet, but uh, feel free to comment below if you've got other ways, better ways perhaps. Who knows? I love learning. But because I'm a bit of a, an old fart and I do things the old school way, I'm used to mixing desks and plugins and uh, outboard effects and things like that in the recording studio. So I'm used to this kind of way of inserting effects into channels on a mixing desk. That's exactly what's happening here. But when you open your audio track mixer, remember I mentioned in a previous tutorial that that needs to be added via window. Make sure you click audio track mixer. It's not loaded as default into a standard project. You have to go and select it in the window. And you think, well, where did this plug in? It's actually this tiny windy arrow on the left hand side here. If you click on that, and there's your global plugins. So you can insert any of the effects that you find in these folders here. So some of them have graphic user faces, some of them don't. So, for example, if I wanted to put the Paramagic EQ in, it pops in there. And for a long time, I was sat and fiddle with these things at the bottom going, and they are really fiddly. You've got to like choose the parameter and ah. Oh, and then someone points out, you know what, you can just double click on it. <laughs> oh, didn't know that, but I know it now. You know, if you want a sort of high pass filter, then you can knock all the low frames out and so on and so forth. And you can like effects chain as well here. So EQs and things will usually be at the start, you can press it towards the end perhaps. When you're chaining effects, think about a guitarist and how they lay out their pedals. The fact is you start off with the stuff that doesn't spread the sound out left and right and make it go all whizzy all over the place. Start off with the simple stuff like um, amplification, overdrive, uh, EQ. Uh, some people like to put a compressor in the chain. And you trip like a triangle and you spread out. So if you've got delays and reverbs and stuff making it really ambient and floaty or modulation effects which spread the sound, then put them towards the end. So um, sort of lower down you'd have things like uh, your reverb for example and you can choose you know whatever you want whatever preset you want there in your mix uh, but always put your reverb towards the end some people like to put the compressors after reverb some before it's it's a different result whatever you want to do really so anything that's spiky i said in previous tutorials is going to need a compressor so be prepared to use it i like to use the one in dynamics it's very very simple and it's laid out in the most conventional way i suppose there it is i have a very straightforward control zero threshold rate attack release and makeup it's all you need really it's very effective i've got various tutorials on compression uh in my videos so do feel free to look it up uh, but an absolute must have tool particularly for dialogue anything spiky so um, I didn't actually want any of those because this mix is done. But I just wanted to show you some of the things I've got. Some of the things like the whimpering woman. It sounds like she's in the bathroom. I haven't got that right yet. Um, so I've got vocal reverb medium. Maybe I need something much shorter. 
um, are more subtle for that and maybe a little less of the weight. I just wanted it to sound a bit further away, that's all. But yeah, she sounded like she was in the bathroom. Got to try these things, haven't you? On the shutter, because the shutter sound was almost like it was, um, you know, on the phone, really close. I had no sense of being outdoors whatsoever, so I put an ever so, ever so slight... Try that again. On the shutter, I put an ever so slight delay and re on it to make it sound a bit further away. And also, um, you can also make things sound further away by putting some EQ and thinning it out. Look, I've got some subtle delay there and a reverb. Basically, you plug it into your heart's content. Not everything has a graphic user interface. For example, on the forest ambience, you may, if you watch my last video, the actual forest ambience is really chirpy. It's full of birds tweeting, yeah, the abbey, but the forest is actually kind of wintry and autumny, and even though it's peaceful at the beginning, it's still a little bit kind of spooky. So I thought it was far too happy. So what I did is I used the um, low pass. Now the low pass hasn't got a graphic user interface because it's literally one control, and that's your cutoff. And here, I don't know if you can see, but I'm cutting off all frequencies above 1700 hertz so you can't hear them at all so what you're hearing is the bass frequencies and some low mids and it's muffling the sounds and getting the ambience without all the tweet 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 happy 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 stuff all right so um that's quite a useful one and also the other thing is that uh, i plugged in my hard limiter here what i've done with the limiter is if i just switch this off for a minute you will see hopefully that uh, this is peaking quite low minus 18 or so Perhaps it peaks later on let's move this along a bit yeah we're minus 22 21 oh minus 17 there I think the scream at the end might push you over. Let's just wait and see, shall we? Can't even see the film at the moment. Never mind, you've seen it before. Oh, minus 18. Yeah, okay. So basically, even though that sounded reasonable volume, you're listening to this produced video so you're not going to get a full sense of this um, but if i were to export this now and put it on youtube it'll be 18 decibels quieter than anything else on youtube which means that you might put my video on turn up your volume and be listening to it quite happily and then you watch a metallica video straight after and your ears are going to bleed because it's going to be 18 decibels louder and it's going to be metallica so that's going to hurt just to kind of stay within conventions and broadcast standards you really want your audio peaking at zero but not going above so this is what the limiter does switch it back on again you're saying here maximum amplitude is minus 0.1 so it's one tenth of a decibel below zero the audio can't go higher than that so it's slightly off zero and then you've got release time and look ahead time well let's go straight to release time you basically want it comes default 100 i leave it on that it basically at this level is not going to switch off at all but if you have that low, you know, like just a few milliseconds, and it does switch off, you get this kind of sense that the audio is suddenly bouncing like that. You don't want any of that. Uh, and if you have it too slow, then you start to smooth things over just too much. Because uh, if there is a bit that where the limiter needs to switch off, you need to allow it to switch off. So leave it on 100, and if you start getting a bouncy, bouncy sound you don't like, you just edge it upwards. All that's left is now to just push the decibels using the input boost now i worked out that around about minus 17 minus 18 so i need to push it by 17 18 decibels well there i've got 17.8 by the looks of it uh look ahead time is to do with how well this works you push it as high as you can i'm not using a particularly powerful computer the higher it is the more cpu power it uses 
possibly the more accurate the outcome uh, but I'm not noticing any problems with it set so reasonably low at the moment so with that now switched on we've got a much uh, stronger outcome and you'll see now that like, it's just yeah it's peaking much higher now There you go, went up to like minus 0.1 for the really loud bits. Obviously, the perceived levels of this are lower than a Metallica concert, uh, even though they're both peak at zero. So it's still going to come across as a more quiet production, but you're going to be reaching broadcast standards by having a peak at zero using that limiter. There's a lot more you can do uh in here if you really know how to master audio and, and use things like compressors first and re-eq it and there's all sorts of things you can do um but that's um really for an expert level but very least high in that hard limiter and push your peaks back up to zero just so you haven't got something robo quiet in your youtube channel right well i hope that was all of help thanks for watching speak soon